I was fleeing from uh, a group that was trying to unjustly punish me for a crime I did not commit. Much like my friend Simon did in season one, actually, but we're not going to retell that story. Don't worry, it's going to be different, I promise you. Well, hello and welcome back once again to me, myself, and I. I'm, as always, your intrepid GM host and player, Trevor DeVal. Thank you so much for joining me here today. And, as always, if you want to help support the show, you can hit like and subscribe. Or if you want to help out on the Patreon, the link for that is in the uh, description box below. When last we left Edbert, he had fled the island in a boat, having sabotaged the other pirate's boat, uh, stranding the other three pirates behind them on the, on the island. He had left uh, in the boat with the pirate navigator Carlos, who we had determined was wicked, and for some reason was contemplating love. Maybe that'll become important, who knows? But they were going off to the drunken ghoul, where Edbert was going to confront the captain and hopefully bargain uh, the the life of the uh, navigator for passage on the ship or at least information or something. He doesn't really know what he's doing, which doesn't, um, doesn't really surprise me, because neither do I. Hence the joy of the random determination. So, before we get into the show proper, a couple things. I'm going to give Edward some... Edward? <laughs> I'm going to give Edbert some uh, APs, some advancement points. Normally you give between 8 to 12. Um, he didn't really do a ton last time. It wasn't a hugely eventful session, so I'm just going to give him 8. And of those 8, he's going to spend 6 of them to raise his parry to 7. And I'm going to leave off 2 APs remaining. As we saw last time, APs can be used to uh, mitigate your your rolls by adding your luck score to a roll. So he has two of those uh, to use. If he doesn't want to keep them for advancement, they may become important. Our chaos factor has been set back down to five. The first thing we have to do before we get into this scene, which is Edbert and Carlos row out to the drunken ghoul to bargain his way onto the ship or something, is we determine, is this scene altered or interrupted? D10, chaos factor, if we get five or less, the scene is interrupted. Ooh, it is! And this is an altered scene because it's an odd number. So an altered scene in Mythic just means that um, the scene progresses, but but there is something that adjusts it. So it's not some wholly random uh, interrupt scene that happens. It's something that alters this scene. Okay, I think I know what it is. I think that Carlos gives him some crucial piece of information or something. So here's the thing, as he makes his way on this boat, or as, as, rather as Carlos rows the boat out to the drunken ghoul as Edbert sits there with a sword at his back, and Carlos is rowing, rowing very, very slowly, getting towards that boat, and as I think they get towards the ship, they can see that there's a, a flurry of activity as the sailors on board see the longboat returning, but they see there's only two figures in it, and I'm pretty sure that the captain, Ero Nicola, whom we know very little, but that will change. I'm pretty sure that he steps out towards the, the edge of the deck and pulls out the old spyglass and sees that, oh, his navigator is on board, but with some guy. So it's very possible, and I think it's very likely, that the gun ports of the ship suddenly open and the cannons are rolled out. Oh, yes. By the way, cannons. I have determined that here in the south, there is gunpowder. There is cannon. But a couple things about that. It's early stage gunpowder, and it doesn't track exactly with our own uh, Earth reality. So basically, in this world, I have decided, there is gunpowder for cannons, for big, heavy, lumbering cannons, but not for, like, pistols and stuff. It's rumored that some of the great powers down here might have the occasional musket uh, company or something, but generally speaking, gunpowder is still not fully understood and not fully reliable either. So basically, you have cannons, definitely have cannons, but you'll just as often see ships with like, you know, trebuchets and ballistas and things like that. So, the cannons roll out of the gun ports, like that, very intimidating display. Uh, Edbert sees this, of course, and realizes, okay, well, um, <laughs> uh, these guys are, are serious. What is the nature of the information that Carlos gives him? Whew, I don't know. 35. Return? Return of war. Okay. 
Are you certain you wish to do this? My captain is not one to be trifled with. We have long been at war with... Other factions? Ooh, perhaps there's other factions I think there are. We have long been at war in these waters with the other pirate kings, as well as the empires who seek to stake their claim on these islands. My captain is not a man to be trifled with. Well, that works out fine for me, because neither am I. As I tried to warn you before on the island, my presence on board the Drunken Ghoul is of great value to my captain. If I am harmed in any way, <laughs> he will have no compunction at all about opening fire with the cannons and blowing this boat out of the water. He is not one to be easily dealt with. Well, I suppose that's just a chance I'm gonna have to take, isn't it? I do not think you are hearing me. We have been fighting a running war with other pirates and members of these great empires, whoever they may be, for a very long time, and we do not suffer intimidation. I don't know, you seem to be suffering just fine right about now. Do not say I did not try to warn you, my friend. So this piece of information is actually, um, is actually very helpful because Edward was planning on intimidating this captain, but now as he hears the situation and we discover that there's there's some pirate war going on out there on the islands, Edward knows perhaps that intimidation might not be the strongest tactic to use against this particular captain. So that is going to alter his approach. The boat comes closer and I think, now that we know a little bit about Captain Eronikula, one of these cannons erupts and a cannonball falls in the water, maybe like, I don't know, 20 yards off the bow of the boat. Sploosh! Clearly a warning shot. But at that moment, Carlos kind of stops rowing and cranes his, his neck back around to look at the, the ship. Stand up. So Carlos kind of turns around and stands up carefully. Tell your captain that you are coming on board with a guest. Carlos had the option of crying out and a warning to his fellow pirates before. He didn't because Edward's sword was at his throat. Well, he's still in a very precarious position. He, Edward's sword is still at his back, but I think maybe he thinks his 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 uh, his own bargaining position is a little stronger now because these cannons are pointed at them. Uh, it's 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 kind of a it's kind of a standoff situation here. So the, here's the question: Wicked Carlos, does he use this opportunity to try and betray Edward? Basically, let's call that very unlikely. Chaos factor five. He, does he do something threatening or intimidating? Uh, 98 extreme no, which means he does basically the opposite. Ahoy, Captain Nicola. It is I, Carlos, your esteemed navigator. I think he probably thinks quite highly of himself, doesn't he? I uh, wish to bring on board a uh, guest, someone whose story I feel you may find of interest to you. It is uh, quite strange indeed. That's right, Carlos, just keep talking nice just like that. We know that Captain Nicola does not suffer intimidation well. We know that they've been at war, so they're they're probably an experienced, hardened crew. But what do we know about Captain Nicola himself? I think now, because Captain Nicola is about to respond, we need to find out a little something about him. In order to do that, we are going to Une. Let's look at the NPC modifier for Captain Nicola. Give us some general idea. Logical. Okay, that makes sense. So he's a very logical captain, hardened, uh, doesn't suffer intimidation well, but very logical, very, very calculating. What is his principal motivation? Captain Nicola, 43. Deter? 84. Deter knowledge. Deter knowledge, he's trying to prevent someone Oh, oh, he's trying to prevent a rival from getting knowledge. Ah, I know what it is. <laughs> he is in possession of a map. He's in possession of a, perhaps a treasure map. Uh, a map to a great treasure that all of these different pirate kings are basically trying to get to. But Captain Nickel has the map. So right now, Captain Nickel is actually being pursued. Not, not right at this exact second, or maybe he is. <laughs> so Captain Nickel is in possession of a treasure map that all these pirate kings want. So as a bit of world building, I think that there's a group of pirates in this area, a loose confederation of pirates, maybe called the League. I think Edbert has a step up here. This can't be all about the NPCs. Edbert has an intimidate of six, which he was gonna use. But his whole plan is kind of shot now because of the information that Carlos has given him that this guy will not, basically intimidate roles would essentially fail on this guy. He's just too hardened. So he has to persuade him. 
Oh boy. <laughs> oh, for Simon's persuasion skills. So his persuade is at four at the moment, but I'm gonna have to spend an AP on luck to see if I can persuade him. So the, the my APs are going down to one. I'm adding my luck of three to my persuade, so I have to get seven or less in order to succeed. So, Edbert steps up. Captain Nicola, my name is Edbert. I seek passage on your vessel. I mean you or your navigator no harm. But if you let me on board, I swear to you that I'll be of some use to you. He's got to get seven or less. Oh. oh, no! The persuasion does not work, which means, as he comes to the edge here, Nicola shouts out over the waves. Let's let's do him like, yeah, let's do him like some sort of northerner. Very well, stranger. You can come aboard. So Carlos rows them in. Now remember the persuasion failed here. And as they get close to the ship, lines are thrown down. Ropes are thrown down, the whole bit. And Carlos climbs up. The other men. Edbert. He's thinking he persuaded them just fine, comes up on deck like this, and right away is surrounded by a group of hostile pirates who, at a signal from their pirate lord, from their pirate captain, immediately straw blades and bows and spears and basically put the weapons up to Edbert. Edbert's hand immediately goes to the pommel of his broadsword, but <laughs> as by instinct, but he's, he can see all of these men surrounding him now. He realizes, uh-oh. <laughs> In fact, I think he, he kind of looks around him and he looks, he looks at Carlos, who also turns back to him as the captain begins to descend the steps. And Carlos says to him, as the blades are at Edward's throat, Well, it seems that the blade is in the other hand now. I try to warn you. The captain, Nicola, comes down. He's got a cane. He's got a rapier at his side. He's dressed like a, a nobleman, as you can see here. He's got like the, the big hat and the, the feather. And at one time, his, his clothes would have been very regal, very noble. But uh, alas, they're tattered and, and patched and uh, torn in, in places. He's got red hair. He's got sort of a, a, a long twirly mustache and a goatee. Very kind of musketeer looking. I thank you for returning my navigator to me unharmed. Uh, what of the other three men that uh, went to the island with him? They're just fine as far as I know. It is true, Captain Nicola. This man chose not to fight the rest of our crew. He chose instead to run and hide like a little mouse. <laughs> the crew <laughs>, uh, laughs. Edward kind of snarls under his breath. You know, I knew I should have killed you on the beach. There'll be no more talk of killing right now. You have, in fact, brought my navigator safe and sound. So for that, I thank you. But he did mention something about you having some story that might be of interest to me. I wonder what that might be, hmm? I'll tell it to you straight. I found myself on that beach. Alone, unarmed, unarmored, with no memory of where I come from or how I got there. Along comes your pirate man. He tries to attack me, so I beat him. We flee into the woods. I do an end run around your very skilled trackers and decide to bring him back to you unharmed in order to gain passage on board the ship. Now, this does not seem like much of a reception for someone who could be a new and valuable member of your crew. Are well, you certain you want to start a relationship off like this? His persuasion did fail. So he can't talk himself out of this situation. Hmm, a valuable member of my crew, you say? Well, let me ask you this. Can you sail? Not exactly. It's not really written on the character sheet, so probably not. Oh, ah, I see, I see. Well, you can't sail. Are you much of a swimmer? Yeah, it's got it at four. I can stay afloat for long enough. Oh, well, listen to that, lads. Here we have an armed and obviously dangerous man who wants to be part of our crew. He can't sail, and he's not much of a swimmer. You claim to have bested my navigator in single combat, so you must be able to fight. That I can do. Would you like a display? Perhaps I might. Perhaps I might. Here's the thing. We know these guys are at war. 
it stands to reason that they have lost crew over the course of that war. Is this crew a little understaffed? And does Captain Nicola actually need more crew? Does he need skilled fighting men? I think that's, uh, actually that's likely, considering the situation. They've been at war, he's got this treasure map that he's, he's trying to keep from the rest of these pirate kings. Oh, zero to extreme, yes! I'll tell you what, Mr. Edbert, Mr. Edbert. If you can prove yourself a fine fighter, Perhaps there's room for you on this crew after all. But uh, no offence, Carlos. My navigator is uh, not the most skilled factor among us. And for you to have bested him as you did on the beach, well, it's really not much to write to him about, is it? The other men kind of laugh and kind of prod Carlos like, yeah, 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 you know. Carlos kind of, his face goes a little red. He's a little, he's a little pee out at this. If my captain will give me the chance, I would gladly fight him again. No, 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 Carlos. You've had your chance. I'll tell you what, Mr. Edward. If you can best my best sword fighter in single combat here on this deck, there just might be a place for you on this crew after all. Prove your worth, Mr. Edward. Prove it now. And the other men kind of, oh, there's a ripple among the men as they realize, ooh, there's about to be a duel fought here. <laughs> well, Captain Nicola, seeing as I don't got much of a choice, you've got yourself a deal. Now, who among you shall be the first to die? Oh, no, 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 no. There'll be no dying here today. Extreme yes on that roll that he needs people. I don't want any of my men to succumb to any wounds today. No, this fight shall not be to the death. It shall be to the kneel. To the kneel. The first one of you who decides that you've had enough pain, all you've got to do is kneel. And that shall be taken as a sign of supplication. And the battle shall be over. I'll tell you what, you best my best swordsman. And you're gonna have yourself a nice meal and ration of grub tonight. But if you lose, well, you're not much good to me then, are you? And over the side you go to feed the fish. Sound fair? <laughs> <laughs> laugh. As fair as I suppose I'd like to get. Let's do it. So, the captain calls forth a man from the crowd, a blonde man with a long sword. Here's the question. This man, whose name... Uh oh Windham. Rolling on the power level chart for Une here, and we get... Oh. Luckily, the greatest swordsman on board this ship is slightly less skilled than Edbert. That's very, very good news. His stats, his timing with his longsword is going to be minus one. His strike with the longsword, this guy is slightly less, so his is nine. Edbert's parry is now seven, so this guy's will be six. The pirates withstand injury roll, or stat rather, Two points of armor, so it's actually seven. And his injury level is uh, five. A duel. <laughs> so Edbert and Wyndham circle each other, testing each other with the blade. The, the crowd of men and pirates jeer them on and take him, Wyndham, take him, you got him, take him. So they turn and turn and turn and we roll timing. So the black is at minus one. Oh, look at that! Oh! Okay, so Edbert goes first, which means that the pirate must declare his strategy first and Edbert can respond. The pirate is going to strike once and parry once. And Edbert sees this coming, so in response, Edbert is going to parry and strike twice, because he's bloodthirsty! <laughs> so Edbert rolls his parry first. It doesn't really matter, but he's gonna roll his parry first. Ooh, and he gets a parry of three, which is good. That's a success. What that means is the pirate's gonna have a penalty of three to strike Edward, so it's gonna come off his strike score. Wyndham the pirate rolls his parry. Does he do it? Six or more? He does his parry of two. A two as well successful, so that means that Edbert is gonna have some penalties. So that what that's what happens in the modifier phase is they're sort of testing each other. Um, the, the, the pirate goes in for a strike, but also kind of goes to parry. Uh, Edbert sees this, prepares his parry, but also tries to get a couple of quick jabs in there with the longsword to try and put this guy down quickly. So in the resolution phase, because Edbert goes first, 
He's got the higher timing. He acts first, which means he does two strikes. Now, he did three actions, which means this will be, uh, each strike will be at a minus two for multi-action penalty and a further minus two for the pirate successful parry. So his normal strike with this broadsword is 10, but each of these strikes is going to be striking on six or less. So the first of the strikes, and it'll, it'll count before the pirate can react. So he could finish this very quickly. Four, that is a successful hit right out of the gate. So Edbert sees the pirate open himself up for an attack and drives his blade in doing potential four damage, but the pirate has a withstand injury of seven. Seven or less, he gets 11. So all four damage happens, that's great. His injury level is down to one with that one hit. Edbert pierces the leather armor and drives the blade in, but at the same time, he's able to pull back, swing around and slash with another attack, six or less. This time, unfortunately, he misses. The pirate is still up, clutching his side, blood pouring from the wound. It's not a lethal wound, but it's a bad, it's a bad puncture. The pirate spins around and drives his single attack forward. He will be minus one multi-action penalty and also an additional three for Edbert's parry. That's minus four. He's rolling on five and he rolls five. Oh no, that is a great potential hit. Edbert's withstand injury. He's not wearing armor. So Edbert's withstand injury is six. Does he soak any of this? He does not. Edbert takes five damage from that. He also is down to one. So the pirate gives as good as he receives. And that is the end of the first round. And they continue to circle around each of them down to basically one hit point at this point. Blood pouring from wounds. <sighs> None of them have uh, injury penalties yet though. And more crucially, neither of them kneels. We go into round two. Ooh, this just got very, very interesting. We do a new timing roll now. Uh, the black one is at a minus one. Oh no, okay. Oh no, that's great actually, because a natural 12 is an automatic fail, which means Edbert, even though he rolled a one, he goes first. So that means once again, the pirate must declare. Well, this pirate has been hurt bad. If he hadn't hurt Edbert, his tactics might be far more defensive, but I think that he sees that he's really hurt Edbert and he can end this himself. Yeah, I think he's going to parry and strike. So basically the same thing he did before. Edbert, he's angry now. He's bloodthirsty. No, you know what? He is the same thing. He parries and strikes twice again. So this the same. it's the same thing as last round. In the modifier phase, Edbert's going to go first. His parry is... Uh, seven, does he parry? He does with a penalty of seven, that is awesome. Does the pirate parry? The pirate's parry is six. The, oh no, the pirate also gets the max parry. It's the resolution phase, so Edbert goes first. He's declared three actions, so it's a minus two multi-penalty, minus six, so that's minus eight from his skill of 10. He's gotta roll two or less for each strike. What's he do? He misses with the first one as the pirate parries it off, and he misses with the second one as the pirate parries that off and finds his opportunity to drive his blade in with his multi-action penalty of one, but Edbert has got a parry of seven, which is a total parry Oh, a total penalty of eight. Ooh, Wyndham has a strike of nine. Nine minus eight is one. He's got to get a one or less. Does he do it? Oh, <laughs> he actually hits. So here's the thing. I'm not even going to bother rolling with stand injury because every time you get a successful strike, it automatically does one point of damage. So even if Edbert gets the best possible with stand injury roll he can do, he's still going to take one damage. Not even going to bother rolling that. But that means Edbert is down to zero. <sighs> As we go into round three, this is not looking great. He's going to apply his luck right now. So we go back to our timing roll. Edbert's luck is going to apply to every roll this round, including his timing. So he is now actually rolling at plus three to the white dice. So we get seven versus five because that penalty. So Edbert goes first again. Edbert's mods is plus three luck to everything he does this round because he declared it at the timing phase. Here's the thing, we don't know anything about Wyndham. Is he the kind of guy that is like fully savage and he's going to lose his discipline perhaps as, as he tastes blood? Is he as bloodthirsty as Edward is? That's a good question. We are rolling on our chart, 68. No, he's not. So that means he's going to still remain defensive. He's gonna do a parry, but only one strike. Edbert, it's got plus three luck, so now he is going to parry and strike twice. Yeah, because he's Edbert. Okay, so in the Modifier phase, Edbert's going to parry. 
He does his parry. His parry is normally 7, but it's actually 10 minus his multi-action of 2, so it's actually 8. His parry. Does he parry? He's gonna get a parry of 3. Does the pirate parry with the multi-action penalty of 1? He's rolling 5, so less. Does he do it? 12! Is it automatic fail? No parry there, which is very good for Edbert. Edbert sees his opportunity. The pirate is trying to be defensive, but he, he slips up a little bit and his blade goes low, allowing an opportunity uh, for Edbert to get in a couple of quick attacks. Here's the thing. Edbert's strike is 10, minus 2 for the multi-action penalty, plus 3 for his luck, which is going to be... And there's no parry. That's great. He's rolling at 11. Oh, this should be good. This should do it. Here we go. His first attack is 6, which is obviously a hit. Withstand injury from the pirate of 7 is a 10. So that means the pirate takes 6 damage. The pirate is now at minus 5. Oh, brutal. And there's another attack coming in. Which is a miss, because a 12 is a miss, even with his luck. Even with his luck, I think Edward presses his luck too much and presses his attack too much, but it doesn't matter because the pirate has taken a five-point penalty. Now, this does not, it doesn't defeat him, but the pirate, does he kneel? If he takes another hit like this, it is over, and I think Wyndham knows that. Does Wyndham submit? I think it's likely. Here we go. Does he kneel? Zero to extreme, yes. Wyndham throws down his blade, and drops to his knees. Yield! I yield! I yield! The crowd of pirates is silenced by this, as Edbert, Edbert, he's got his blade at Wyndham's neck, and I think that Edbert is thinking, do I kill him? Do I just get this over this? You attack me. And I think he starts to say this out loud. He doesn't even know he's saying this out loud. I come aboard this ship. I offer my services. And this is what you do. You force me to fight your best. Huh? This is the best you can do. Huh? The captain comes over to him and you know, tries to stop him. Right now, Mr. Edbert, there's no need for such a display. You've clearly proven your worth. Wyndham is alive for the moment. And I hope that he will remain that way, as I have few enough fans on board this vessel as it is. I'm as good as my word. You can have passage on board this ship, working passage, mind you. And if you continue to uh, display your worth like you've just done, you may even be considered a full and earning member of this crew. But for now, I do implore you, Put away your sword. There'll be no further threats from any man Jack aboard this vessel. Is that understood? And the crew kind of like mumbles to themselves. They didn't expect this to happen. Expected their guy to win. He didn't, but just barely. Edbert is not seriously wounded. He's at zero, but still it's bad. He's bleeding from multiple wounds. Edbert, uh, seething, cleans his blade on the shoulder of the still kneeling Wyndham. <laughs> Wipes off Wyndham's own blood on his shoulder, and he he flips the blade around and he throws it at the captain's feet. He says, if we're going to go any further on this endeavor, I need a proper weapon. You got a longsword around here. I think it's fairly likely they do. They furnish Edbert with the longsword and Edbert has secured his place on board. Not as a full member of the crew, mind you, but rather just a temporary, just a temporary measure, perhaps while the captain, you know, considers this new crazy person who is um, just best at his best fighter. Okay, so that is that scene. Great. New characters. Well, we have Wyndham. Oh, and we also know uh, that there is the League. The League of Pirates. We also know that there are great powers. Uh, I don't know anything about the great powers yet, but I'm just going to add them as characters. The great powers. Is there any threads? This treasure map, Captain, er Captain Nikula's treasure map that he is guarding, that he is basically being uh, hunted for. We know there was a mutiny, or uh, an attempted mutiny, by this Somerville, which did not work. So, there's obviously some issues with the crew here, right? Because one guy is not going to attempt a mutiny all by himself. So I think, yeah, we know that. The crew is not happy for some reason. Chaos factor, uh, Edbert was in control, so the chaos goes down to four. Okay, the next scene, Edbert consults the captain. So, some of the pirates go in the boat and go back to the island to retrieve those other... <laughs> Those are the three pirates that got left behind, presuming they're still alive. But in the meantime, the captain says, come with me, Edbert. And he leads him into the cabin. This is a new scene. Does it get interrupted or altered? Chaos Factor is four now. Ten. No. 
It does not. Edbert is brought into a well-appointed stately captain's cabin. It's quite large. The captain goes around behind the large desk. On the desk is everything you would imagine there to be in a pirate captain's uh, cabin. Edbert sits down across the table from the captain. Also, the captain would uh, fetch the surgeon as well to come in and, and tend uh, uh, Edbert's wounds. The captain sits down, he pours a mug of, you know, brandy or uh, rum or grog or whatever they're drinking and passes one over to Edbert. I think Edbert gladly accepts it, drains his mug, sets it down. So, how is it exactly that you came to be on that beach? I told you, I don't remember. I just woke up. There I was. Right, well, what is the last thing you do remember then? Good question. Is the last thing Edbert remembers the events of the tail end of season one? I think there's no way. There's no way. Uh, 44. Oh, 44 is doubles. And it is under the chaos factor of four. So we have a random event. 44 is doubles. That's definitely a no. So, so what does he remember? I think at least months have gone by. So there. Four. He has some memory of stuff that happened before. This is what I'm going to postulate. I'm going to postulate that the Order of the Purifying Flame found Edbert's location. There was an attempt to capture him, maybe? Well, let's just ask the chart. We have a random event as well, which I'm going to deal with in a second. But right now, in the past, in the past, what does Edbert remember? Was Simon's home burnt to the ground by the fury of the Purifying Flame? I'm going to say 50-50, because I, I really don't know. Uh, 48, no. Okay, so that means then that Edbert was found, I think, probably in Chiton City itself, when he was not with Simon. So Edbert had gone into the city for some other reason, maybe looking for someone who could help him finally understand how to purge himself of this restless spirit, Sherilyn, who had not yet returned. I don't think Sherilyn has returned since the ending of her by Stone Bolt to the Crossbow. And he was found by agents of the order. But I think he had to flee, and I think that Edbert was on the run. I think that Edbert made his way down to Hundatora. We don't know much about the order either at this point, but we do know that the order was chasing him, and I think that uh, Edbert took ship south. Let's call it somewhat likely. Is that what happened? Ooh, no, that is not what happened. Well, he didn't take ship voluntarily, but maybe, maybe he got shanghaied, right? Knocked out and thrown into the back of a boat and pressed into work? Is it possible? I don't think so. As Edward, after all, he'd, he'd kill everybody. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's very unlikely. I think it's unlikely that that's the case. Is that what happened? <gasps> it is! It is! Amazing! Edbert got basically shanghaied. But I'm gonna say that is where his memory ends. I was fleeing from uh, a group that was trying to unjustly punish me for a crime I did not commit. Much like my friend Simon did in season one, actually, but we're not going to retell that story. Don't worry, it's going to be different, I promise you. The last thing I remember, I was in a city called Hundatora, far to the north. I was uh, attacked, knocked out, put in uh, the brig of a boat. Next thing I know, I wake up here. Do you remember anything about the vessel that uh, abducted you? Or the captain? The details, I'm afraid, are hazy at the moment. Well, I'm sure they'll come back, but in the meantime, whoever you are, or wherever you come from, you've proven yourself a capable fighter, and as I said, out there on the deck, as long as you keep your nose clean and prove your worth to us, you'll be welcome on board this vessel. Let's find out what this um, random event is. NPC action. Which NPC takes the action? The League of Pirates! Oh, ho, ho, ho. The, this is the random event that happened as they're talking. What happened? What is the action and subject? The League of Pirates, 54. Kill? <laughs> 43. Competition? Kill competition! Oh my god! So as they're talking... Right, well, as long as you keep your nose clean, you'll be welcome on board my vessel. Thank you, I think. At that moment, there is the sound of cannon fire <laughs> off in the distance, and an explosion uh, uh, erupts out on deck. The captain leaps up, so does Edward. They burst out onto the deck where they can see that a whole section of the, uh, of, of the gunnel of the ship has been blown apart, and some of their men are sort of lying on the ground as well, screaming in pain and out across the waves at a fairly close, at least in cannon range, is a galleon or other type of ship flying some sort of pirate league 
colors and flags. The captain looks up and sees that. He realizes that the other ship has got them fully in the broadsides and he screams at Carlos, he screams at his men, get us underway now, get us out of here. They found us, they found us. Who are they? Who is the ship that has just found the drunken ghoul? What do they want? What does Edbert's complicated backstory mean? These are all questions that we will have to answer next time on the next episode of Me, Myself, and I. Thank you so much for joining me. And as always, if you enjoy what you see here, please do hit like and subscribe. And if you want to help support the show on Patreon, the link for that is below. Thank you so much for joining me. And we will see you on the next episode of Me, Myself, and I.